people pardon me for bringing this tragic story to you people about a toddler named Yasin Jenkins who was used by his father as a human shield in 2019 and Philadelphia shooting dies his father Nas Moreau allegedly tried to buy drugs with counterfeit money a toddler who prosecutors say was used as a human shield by his car artist's father during a 2019 drug-related shooting in Philadelphia died Tuesday. Yashin Jenkins III was just 11 months old when he was shot in the head, neck, and buttocks after his father, Nas Monroe, allegedly tried to buy drugs with counterfeit cash in the city of Huntington Park section. Officials have said the alleged shooter, Francisco Ortez, 29, opened fire on Moreau's car after the drug deal went sour. This was another tragic situation that took place in my hood over three decades ago with an individual that I know that also used a three-year-old child as a human shield. This article is not a full representation of everything that took place. I just think this young man, Eric, that I know very well, that was a good, well-kept, well-mannered individual, his mother Mary, his sister Tanya, and his older brother that's going to speak in this article. I just think that he was in the wrong place at the wrong time when this took place, but let me expound by reading the article. He wouldn't do anything that insisted the 21-year-old Jacques Casu. He likes kids. In fact, he sometimes babysits for us. Jacques Casu said his brother was sitting on a bench playing Donkey Kong when the shooting started. Asked why Eric Casu had been targeted by gunmen, the suspect brother-in-law, Ike Kinglock, suggested maybe over jealousy. They say he's a sharp dresser. He looks good and doesn't do anything for a living, said Kinglock, 25. He doesn't have to do anything. His mother's got a good job, Kinglock added. Kanglot said Eric Cashew told him he heard five shots and thought they came from two different guns, a high caliber gun like a 45 or a 9 millimeter, and a small caliber gun. Kinglot added, everybody has guns. There are 12-year-olds with guns. The real question is, who doesn't have guns? I hear shots just about every other night, sometimes every night. The 75th Precinct, known locally as Dodge City, kept a tight hold on its grim nickname last year by ranking number one in murders in the city with 108. Okay, peace, my people. This is God in the streets. I just got through showing y'all on the first clip about a father that was out in Philadelphia that took his 11-month son to a drug transaction in which he had counterfeit money 
and tried to purchase or did purchase the drugs. But unfortunately, when he went to get back in the car, the drug dealer that was 29 years old at that time, you know, decided to open up fire on the car, not knowing that it was 11 month boy inside of the car and shot him five times. He went to the hospital. He lived for a moment. But here it is, 2022, that same 11-month boy returned to the essence. I like really had to hold up for a minute because uh, it really hit me hard right there for a minute because that was why I did the second part to this which was about an incident with an individual that I know in my project, once again, Cypress Hill, back in the late 80s, going into the 90s, because the caucus was in office. He was the governor at that time. Uh, an individual that I know named Eric that lived in 305 Sutter Avenue, had a mother named Mary, sister Tanya. I didn't know his older brother that I speak about in that article that I read too well. But anyway, uh, he happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time because like his older brother said and his brother-in-law, you know, he was basically a good kid. And Miss Mary, you know, she was like my mother, hard working, you know. Most of the mothers back then, they made sure that they took care of their kids and gave them the best that they possibly could give them. So he ain't have no need, as far as I know, he wasn't out there running wild. But, you know, he was just like all the rest of the youth back then, you know. They click up, hang up with different cats in the project. And unfortunately, you know, my young protege that I love very dearly, rest in power forever, Sharif, you know, from the plazas, Mount Everest. Uh, unfortunately, he got King I Love Love. And when that happened with him, you know what I'm saying? Brothers ain't, you know, take that too kindly. So... It was a response. I don't know who was there. I just heard, you know, through the grapevine, you know, that that was a alleged response, you know, to my young brother once again, rest in power, Sharif, being King I Love Love. And being that he was King I Love Love over there in my projects, you know, it was a, a slight Rule of law, wisdom of law rule at that time. Whoa. So the response was, bunch of shots fired. Brother Eric was over there on the sunny side, which it took place. And so happily, like they said in the article, <laughs> It was called Dodge City. Once again, we was number one with 108 murders. And I'm not bragging and boasting about that. Once again, my people. But when I read these articles, I read them so that y'all hear the facts. I don't read them to glorify any of these, like I said, uh, tragedies in our community. And I'm only going over these tragedies so that y'all can see how tragic they were and how much it traumatized us as a group of people that we couldn't even see that at that time us responded by picking up a young child and using them as a shield when we so accustomed to being in a war zone. Once again, his brother-in-law said, Hearing gunshots every other night. 
hearing gunshots every night is nothing new. Because at that time, like he said in the article, kids as young as 12 years old is carrying guns every day. The same thing that we see in what? Nowadays. That's why I say in our lessons, we got to what? Renew our history. Because surely if we don't study the past and understand the present, we won't know where we're going in the future. And this is why I'm relating these stories. Like I said, this happened decades ago. But yet it's still the same mentality is still going on in our communities. The death and destruction of our community is being done by us because we're not being accountable for the ill things that we do with inside of our community. Even though a lot of us are mentally ill who would not be traumatized living in an environment that's not supposed to be a war zone but yet every day the realities of individuals being shot and killed even our babies is taking place When the soldiers go and fight the war and they come back home, they say they got post-traumatic stress. You think we don't have post-traumatic stress from living in these war-like environments? And true, due to our activities and our participation in the illegal narcotic trade, and all other activities that take place within inside our community that once again, our communities are what? Out of hand. So now what took place three decades ago in East New York, Brooklyn, where my man Eric had to pick up a three-year-old child in the middle of random gunfire by multiple weapons. Good kid, like I said once again. If I'm not mistaken, you know his first time in trouble and everything with the law, serious nature, as far as I know. And, you know, they decide to take it to trial. And if he didn't take it to trial, I know that, you know, he received four to 12. So either he blew trial or he had to cop out to it. Being in the wrong place at the wrong time amongst the wrong individuals. And in a bad situation. His situation, none like this father in Philly that made this decision of allowing his drug habit to dictate his actions to the point that he would take his 11 month child, son, beautiful, original, Asiatic, black prince and place him in a situation where he knows he's going with counterfeit money to purchase drugs that at any given time giving a drug dealer fake money, counterfeit money is a total violation that you know that that can happen, that you can get shot or killed or murdered but instead of it being your own burden for your own self and destruction or using drugs, you decided to take your innocent child with you. 
that you could say you use as a shield, like they say in the newspaper report. Because not only was he shot five times during that incident, but here it is. When he turns three years old, 2022, he returns to the essence from those complications of those gunshot wounds that he received at 11 months. I mean, when we going to wake up? When we going to start holding ourselves accountable in our community? We can dictate these actions. I'm not telling y'all what to do. I'm just telling y'all that it's got to be a better way of how you doing it. It's definitely got to be a better way when you can make a decision to have your child with you while you going to do an illegal drug transaction knowing that not only are you going to do that transaction, but you're going to do something in the course of that transaction that could cause you harm. But the harm didn't come to you. The harm came in the worst way and it came to your child. A law forbid or no mysterious way that any of my children should have to leave this physical earth before me or my grandchildren or any of my younger loved ones, nieces, nephews, through physical blood, mental blood, family from the street, reality, that that would drive me insane. Because before you could be the father of civilization and God of the universe, you got to be that to your very own universe, meaning your own woman and children. You got to be responsible to them. The father is the leading teacher and God or his home circumference. You fatten her, not just physically, but you fatten her with the seed of knowledge. And then she takes that through her actions, which is the wisdom, and she gives that to the understanding, which is your children. So how can a father lead his own child to death. I tell you how. Through becoming ignorant. Through becoming a savage, meaning a person who has lost all knowledge and stuff and is living a beast way of life. Because only a beast actions could be like that, where they could devour their own child. Or place their own child in a situation where that child could be devoured. Wake up, my people. Understand that we got to be responsible for our own communities. And yeah, you might see me sitting here and I hear people, oh, come out. I'm, believe me, I'll be outdoors. But when I'm out there, I'm out there doing something. I'm trying to make a constant contribution to what I'm held responsible for first and foremost, which is my immediate family. And then through me doing my job with my immediate family, that allows me to be able to do that to my extended family. And my extended family are all those that are air like in thought and air like in mindset to mind. We say the science of life is love, peace, and happiness. Peace is the absence of all confusion. 
Stop being confused. Stop being tricked. Stop being misled. Because the devil started causing confusion amongst the righteous people, causing them to fight and kill one another. Devil Smith is telling lies, stealing, and trying to master the original man. We got to stop trying to master ourselves through destroying ourselves through violence. Allowing our children to destroy themselves through violence. We got to stop this vicious cycle. And the only way we can stop this vicious cycle is we got to bring the love back. We call it hoods now. We used to call it neighborhoods because they was neighborhoods because everybody that stayed within that hood knew each other and had love for one another. And out of that, this is how the gang structure and other things form. When we first moved out to these areas, whether you was on the West Coast, the East Coast, the South, wherever, if you were the first blacks to move into those neighborhoods, then you know what you was up against. And especially back in those times, they didn't want you there. Nigga, go home. And I'm not promoting no racism. Because we're not pro-black nor anti-white. But before I can teach any other human families on the planet Earth, I first got to be responsible for my own. And once we get back to the nature of who we are, like I said, thug, that acronym means teach a hood you are God. Teach the hood, you God. That's a thug. Stop teaching them that they demons and that they on demon time, meaning that their life is short. Their life is all about evil and destruction and, and everything else. We've been through all that so that y'all wouldn't have to go through that. We came out the 60s and 70s with a revolutionary state of mind. Now that mindset has been destroyed and we've been rocked back to sleep. Y'all got prettier cars, better jewelry, you know what I'm saying? All this other fake Stuff that's going on with the chicks feeling that they got to, you know, redo their bodies over. You know, everything is is, is is glamour and, you know, materialistic. And with all those things, we lost sight of who we really are. What is it for a man to gain the world but lose his what? Soul. Let's get back to protecting our babies. Like our father taught us. Allah said, save the babies. Save the youth. We can't have no future without the youth. And the youth must realize that they can't have no future without the old. The young can't do without the old and the old can't do without the young. I never thought I'd be sitting there, sitting in front of, you know what I'm saying, a camera, a phone, or anything, you know, spreading these jewels to y'all at the age of equality cipher. I'm proud that I've been blessed because it was time that back then that you could have never told me that I would be blessed to see, you know, this degree in my life. And as you become mature, you learn to cherish life. You only get one life. Don't twist it up. 
The dead is never known to return from the grave. If anybody had enough money, anybody had enough power, anybody had enough of anything, then they'd be back amongst you. But when you leave here, however you leave here, it's a one-shot deal. So all y'all, you stop thinking you just living for the day. Live for the day, live for tomorrow, live for the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year, the next decade. And that's how we build. But if we constantly destroying one another, we'll never see the process of divide. Like I said, mine say build, destroy, or divide. Because when you destroy that which is negative, then when you recreate it, it should come back in the likeness and image of something that's divine. Stop falling victim to all these false realities, false worlds that they got out here and go back to your universal self. We became a part of the lost and found. But many of us have what? Recovered. But we were not what? Physically dead. We were only mentally dead. Stop being blind, deaf, and dumb. We got to go back to this pure mathematics, how we was giving it up when it first came to us. That's why we becoming so twisted. Like they say in the lexi, lesson, diluted, mixed, and tampered with. Because once something becomes diluted, mixed, and tampered with, it's no longer in its original form. Once something becomes grafted, it becomes what? Weak and wicked and it is no longer what? The same. Separation is the first tool and the first form of making devil. But before we can unite as a group of people, we got to first unite with ourselves. We must become one with ourselves again. Get back to our true nature of peace and stop having all this confusion amongst our own self for things that's other than ourself you ain't gotta be nobody be yourself don't strive to be a gangster or this that and the third in your hood and all this because you doing all that but at the end of the day who you doing it for? Are you really doing it for the people that love you and care for you the most? And I know it's a lot of y'all that's out there, you know what I'm saying, in the wilderness because your parents fell victim to drugs, alcohol, you know, to their own selfish desires. Because it takes a lot. To make those obligations and sacrifices that's necessary in order to raise your family right and exact. So I hope once again that God in them streets have hit you with a little bit of jewels. Like I said, I'm not here for the money. I'm not here for the flame and glory about my hood is this, that, and the third. I'm here to use these real life stories to help you make better decisions in your life while you're young. So you don't have to be subjected to those hells that we went through. Because once again, in the lessons they say, hell is built upon imperfection due to the people who construct them have imperfect capability. Stop listening to these people that got imperfect capability. Stop being the 85% who is easily led in the wrong direction, but hard to be led in the right direction. 
The only person that can lead you is yourself. Knowledge born in the supreme alphabet. Mind just said Savior. I'll take Savior self or self-saving. However y'all want to put it. Because at the end of the day, it lets you know when that's stated is that the only way you can be saved is if you save yourself. And I'm going to give you one more jewel before I get out of here and get something else ready for y'all with some jewels and content that can help you better your life and make better decisions while you young. And I keep saying for the young, because the old, if you ain't did what you had to do by now, it may not be over for you. But you got to make that judgment to make that change. But the young, we held responsible for them. We got to guide them in the right direction. They can't learn how to ride a bike, not unless you teach them how. So therefore, we held responsible. So let's make sure, once again, like I said, that y'all hit that like button. Let me know that you appreciate my content. Let me know that you appreciate me bringing you these real stories. Like I said, there's a lot of individuals that's going to get out here. And I'm not hating on none of them. They can put these stories together and make them look real good. You know what I'm saying? With the videos and presentation. But at the end of the day, if you ain't really lived through this, you ain't never really experienced this. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you don't have a right. They make movies every day. But guess what? I'm telling you a bunch of things that movies can be made out of. But they was real life events. And these real life events I participated in. You know what I'm saying? Willingly or unwillingly because most of us was good individuals raised by good structure parents or parents but we became products of our environment because no matter what your mother might have tried to do or your father might have tried to do to protect you from that and even if you wasn't actively involved you might have still became a casualty of those wars, of ignorance, of us striving, you know what I'm saying, to say that we making a better living, a better way. And materialistically, we probably did. But all at the hand state of what? Us losing our children, our children being killed, our mothers and fathers, you know, becoming crackheads and junkies. And individuals decided, oh, I'm on my cell it to them because somebody else is going to do. Once that unconditional love is gone, woo, you really produce demons and monsters and gremlins. Because if you don't receive that nurture, that unconditional love from your mother and your father and unfortunately you know us being black males a lot of us had to do it without our fathers some of us understood when we got older as black men ourselves going through all the trials and tribulations that we have to go through out here to try and keep our family together the bricks we threw on the street the risk that we subject ourselves to just to say, you know, we was capable of providing. Because it just didn't mean because you got a degree that everything was going to be all right. Because I know like myself, before I left, I was underqualified. I came back home, I'm overqualified. And then you sending me to another area and telling me now, 
oh, I'm underqualified again because I don't got no experience. I got a degree, but now I need two years experience in order to work over here as, you know, a manager or this, that, and the third. But how am I going to get that experience if you don't give it to me? So I'm, you know, babbling around with all this and going in a lot of different directions just to show you, man, <laughs> life ain't just straightforward. You're going to run into all type of paths, all type of things, whether it's legal, illegal, or whatever. That's why we say the law is the law of all the worlds, because there's all type of worlds out here. The drug world, the prostitution world, the robbery world, you know, the boosting world, the pedophile world. All type of worlds out here. World obesity. People talk about drug habits. What about food habits? All things can become bad habits if you abuse them. And once again, I relate that to this situation because that father was so abusive in his nature and his course of using drugs that he couldn't make the decision as a father that unconditionally love his child to the point that he would not allow that drug urge or that drug habit, that demon that was on his back to not make him take his child with him and place his child in harm's way and eventually allow his child to leave this earth before him. So once again, people, Make the right decisions. He made the wrong one by bringing his child with him. My man Eric made the wrong one by being in the wrong place at the wrong time. That day when that incident took place, you know, and it cost him time out his life, you know, and I know whatever way it went, he regretted it to somewhat degree. You know, even if he could consciously put in his mind that, you know, it was a mistake and, you know, I grabbed the, the child out of fear or whatever reaction. But for every action, there's, they say, an opposite and equal reaction, but sometimes the opposite reaction don't necessarily got to be equal. It could be a whole lot worse. So keep in mind, do the right thing. Make the right decision. I'm not no preacher. I'm not no, you know, e-man. I'm not no, you know what I'm saying, uh, person that's going to tell you I haven't made numerous mistakes before in my life. But what I can tell you is through those mistakes and those errors that gives me the maturity and the wisdom and the ability to be here now to try and give back something for those mistakes that I made. To give back something for those judgment calls that I thought was all right because at that time, you know, I was playing ball like everybody else. So whatever it took to survive, you know, I became a part of those realities. So now, nowadays, you know, I'm going to do what we all should be doing as thorough, official OGs in our hood, respectable, non-respectable, but we still here. Make sure that you're not one of the individuals that's promoting this devilishment that you one of the individuals still leading our youth in the wrong direction instead of the right direction. Once again, y'all, make sure y'all hit that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe. It's free. Hitting the like button is free. Hitting the share button is free. The only thing that's not free is my time and my energy 
that I'm putting into this to give something back to y'all, to hopefully give you the jewels and the wisdom, you know, that at times was not provided to me or I did not take advantage of it. Because once again, I will not say that there was not OGs like myself in the hood that did everything they could to get us to go in the right direction. But like everything in existence, you got to make the choice. Good, bad, or indifferent. And once you make that choice to be an active player in the game, whether you get hurt, benched, you know, foul, whatever, you got to still play through the game. Don't be a part of that negative game and then now when the consequences come. Because if you hit the street, know there's two things that's definitely guaranteed to you. Jail time or death. And sometimes both. Because some in individuals, they just don't get it. And like they say, I carry it like that. They carry that nonsense all the way to their grave. So make sure you're not a part of that statistic. Life is beautiful, but life is also only what you make it. So make the right choices once again. Keep, you know what I'm saying? Check it for God in them streets. Showing me love by allowing my subscribers and allowing my views that constantly go up because that lets me know that y'all paying attention to the supreme knowledge, wisdom, and understand about true facts of life so that we can all come together as a group of people and go back to our nature of being kings and queens instead of us being, you know, everything other than who we really are. Peace. I'm the all in all, from the dust in the universe, to the waters in the womb I surf. I'm the all in all, from the atoms that exist in the sun, to the atom that you finish in one. I'm the all in all, from the first king to walk this globe, to the last black slave they stole. I'm the all in all, every living thing you see, all of those things exist in me. I'm the all in all, from the depths to the sea to Mount Everest. A law in the flesh, most benevolent. This physical form born from melanin. When electrical thoughts fall.